It seems like Steve Maxwell can't catch a break from bashing kettlebells. And while I think it is perfectly fine if you change your opinion over time, I've done this as well. There's a good way and a bad way to go about it. A subscriber brought my attention to this video, which I'm going to talk about today. Steve, if you're watching this video, please accept my invitation that I've sent you via email or via Instagram to have a discussion on my podcast. I'd really love to talk to you. I've talked to many OGs back in the days, in the RKC days around the 2000s when the kettlebell was popularized in the Western Hemisphere. So please, I'd love to talk to you. If you watch this, let's do this. But hey, before we get started, if you're a man over 40 and you're looking to get started with kettlebells and you're looking for a solid, easy to get started kettlebell workout, I got you. Check the first link in the description. It's 100% free. <laughs> Grüß Gott, Gregory von Lebestag here. Steve Maxwell had a conversation with Jay Vincent about kettlebells. And he said that, you know, what he usually says, his shtick, that kettlebells are dangerous and kettlebells are going to get you hurt, so on and so forth. So I want to tune in, listen to what Steve has to say, and then I'm going to give you my feedback. So I got Steve Maxwell here with me, one of the best jujitsu coaches in the world. He pretty much popularized the kettlebell and even popularized famous silly exercises like the Turkish get up, if I'm not mistaken. And here's two things. First of all, Pavel Tatsulin popularized the kettlebell. I'm not saying that Steve wasn't pivotal in assisting Pavel, but you know, I live in Switzerland and I've heard of Pavel. I've never heard of Steve Maxwell. I've heard of Steve Maxwell after Pavel. I've heard of Steve Carter, my sensei, after Pavel. I've talked to many experts, coaches, and kettlebell folks on my podcast, and almost all of them mentioned Pavel Tatsulin's name on how they got started with Enter the Kettlebell or Power to the People or whatever have you, even though that wasn't directly aimed towards kettlebells. What we can say, though, is as far as I know it, is that Steve Maxwell came up with the Turkish getup to include it in the RKC curriculum back in the day. I agree, we can also call it the circus get up. <laughs> but hey, if you love this exercise, it's awesome. But you know, I agree that you can do probably better exercises, press, squat, swing, that probably give you more bang for your buck than a Turkish get up. Because many people look at it from this dogmatic approach because it wasn't simple and sinister from Pavel. Now everybody think it is the Holy Grail or kettlebell cannon, which I don't think it is, but it doesn't mean that it's not a cool exercise. And it surely doesn't mean that if you enjoy it, that you're supposed to stop doing it. All that being said, the kettlebells did give me a lot of what I was after but at a big price. There was no doubt. It's fucking hard, dude. It is. And I was still using it in the high... It, it still fell within the realm of high-intensity training. I wasn't doing marathon workouts. I mean, my workouts are like 20 minutes, 30 minutes at most. Because it was too damn hard. Usually three exercises at a time. You know, like pull-ups, turkeys, get-ups, and swings would be like a, a very common workout for me. Or chins and dips and... Uh, you know, get about snatch or clean and jerk, maybe front squats, you know, stuff like that. Now he says that kettlebell training is hard and I agree, especially if you use a challenging weight. And he says that kettlebells gave him what he was after, which is awesome. And he mentioned powerful exercises, which I would consider most bang for your buck exercises that give you a lot of return on investment. Now, just because kettlebell training is tough, especially if you know what you're doing and you increase the weight, it doesn't mean that it's killing you. And it doesn't mean it's, that it's gonna break you. Because let's put the kettlebell aside. Let's use dumbbell, let's use barbell, let's use body weight, let's use any kind of training implement or modality. If load exceeds capacity and you don't know what you're doing, you're getting hurt. If you don't abide by solid rules of training education, push, pull, squat, hinge, so on and so forth. And if you don't understand rest periods, of course, you're going to drain your body, you're going to destroy it, and you're probably gonna hurt yourself. So here's the idea. I believe that you can go into the high intensity zone and still do a workout that gives you more energy than it takes away from you. We have experience in this from over seven years now with many of our clients personally as well. We get so much feedback from people all around the world, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s people who are still going strong with kettlebells because you have to know how to schedule and, and use a solid protocol to use a tool that can give you a lot of bang for your buck. And since you're using momentum, you also have to have 
a solid capacity and base layer of strength before you go into these more advanced exercises, I would say. And even if you're lacking that strength, you can build it up by using very light weight or just practicing the exercise and then build strength and technique at the same time. Sometimes people don't have a lot of time or they have to crunch your workout into a very small time frame and then skill practice and the workout itself is sometimes confined into one and then you have to understand okay they have to learn a bit a little bit of the skill but they also have to go into the workout that's when you're teaching and training normal people from everyday life who are not enamored with kettlebell training or who are not in love with fitness like we are we're just normal people who need an outlet to train because you know it gives them better results you know it improves their health i'm assuming based on steve maxwell's credentials that he knew what he was doing but maybe i'm wrong he didn't know what he was doing and that's why the kettlebell killed him so i mean we know the kettlebell is kind of dangerous <laughs> so let's put it like this we know that dumbbells are dangerous you know that barbells are dangerous we know that machines are dangerous we know that high intensity is dangerous we know that crossfit is dangerous we know that mma is dangerous we know that jiu-jitsu is dangerous we know that karate is dangerous so on and so forth if you don't live under a rock 24 7 not moving and you go out there enjoying your life there's always a possibility of you getting into a some some sort of danger zone right there's always danger lurking outside if load exceeds capacity and you're ignorant of the tool there is the danger has nothing to do with the tool has everything to do with how you handle it the best parable would be the problem's not with the dog. You, I have a staffy. You have a pit bull. You have a cane corso. The problem's not with the dog. The problem is with the guy at the end of the leash. The problem's with us. So we have to understand how to teach and train the dog. If we don't know what we're doing, of course, then we blame it on the tool because we maybe didn't educate ourselves well enough to understand the tool in and all by itself. What kind of injuries did you suffer when you started using it that that you were like, all right, this this doesn't work? You know, it's funny because my ex-wife also started in with a kid about, but I remember her saying, wow, wouldn't it be a kick in the pants if 10 years down the road, we find out that this stuff is really dangerous and really, really messing <laughs> us up. I, wasn't, I didn't suffer any overt injuries. Actually, that's not true. I had a couple. But, um, it was just the wear and tear, mostly? The wear and tear, man. I started feeling it. I'm thinking, wow, I'm fucking myself up with this stuff. Brother Steve, you're evading the question. You couldn't pinpoint anything that led to a specific injury because of the kettlebell. You mentioned your right shoulder. What? That can't be from grappling? That can't be from jiu-jitsu? That can't be from any anything else? So you know for 100% fact, or you can go to a doctor, right? He checks out your shoulder, and then he can, through evidence-based practice, guarantee you that, oh, that was press number 3,252 that you did back in 2004. That led to this cas cascade of injury. Come on, man. You felt like, oh, 10 years down the road, it doesn't feel good for me and my wife or whatever. And that may be the case, which is totally fine. It's totally fine. Kettlebells aren't your thing anymore. I get it. There's a lot of ex-crossfitters who say CrossFit isn't my thing anymore. Or there's a lot of ex-bodybuilders who say that that's, my, that's not my thing anymore. Even though we can say CrossFit has tendency to injury. And if you do bodybuilding on a professional level, level with all these chemical enhancements, there is danger, danger lurking down the road that you can avoid. But let's use, an, let's use another tool. Let's use somebody who just said, well, I was into fitness. I was into lifting weights and now I do rock climbing. Totally fine. But the implement is not the problem. It's how you implement it is the problem. And since you can't pinpoint to a specific injury, you didn't answer Jay's question. You just didn't. Sport aspect of it. It's called kettlebell sport, where it's the dumbest fucking sport in the world. You basically <laughs> <laughs> snatch a kettlebell for 10 minutes straight. And you do one arm. <laughs> that is the dumbest sport in the world. This statement is ignorant and disrespectful guys man you you are disrespecting a whole set of athletes who's into the sport and by the way steve it's not just a snatch it's jerk and long cycle it's three disciplines but i'm assuming you're probably not as informed as you claim you are you guys don't like kettlebells totally fine and now you take it even an inch deeper disrespecting people who 
dedicate their time to a sport, which some people might think it's stupid or whatever have you, but that's just a personal perspective. But I would assume or I would expect better from fitness professionals to have a decent standard. Yes, you can critique stuff, but come on, man. Uh, and people become incredibly efficient at doing it. So they're using as little energy as possible, which makes it completely unsuitable if you're, if you're looking to become in better physical condition. You say it's worthless if you become efficient at an exercise? Okay, marathon runners, they are in incredible shape. The, this recent guy, he ran a marathon, marathon in two hours. What do you think he is? He's efficient at running. He's efficient with his technique. And he's in awesome physical condition. I do agree that in kettlebell sport, there's a huge technique aspect to it. And once you have it down pat, here's what you need. Cardiovascular endurance. And we all need it. And explosiveness and some power and strength. And these are physical qualities that have skill transfer into everyday life. And they will improve your physical condition. If you become efficient at it, what? That's jiu-jitsu? You're into jiu-jitsu, Steve, right? So you become efficient at rolling. Doesn't that mean that you also become, that you also improve your physical condition? The lie of the kettlebell that gets a lot of people into it was you're selectively recruiting fast switch muscle fiber, which we all know is a, a bunch of nonsense. You're not. I have to read Pavel Tatulin's new book on this because I think Pavel's big on claiming that you can selectively recruit your muscle fiber. So I think he takes a stab on Pavel. I'm not into this research as much. What I know based on my surface level of understanding is once you move your body, all muscle fibers are activated or everything works in harmony. And depending on how much weight you're lifting or how intense you are, the more muscle fibers get recruited. And Yes, we also know that there are certain muscle fibers who are responsible for more cardiovascular activities and others are more responsible for strength activities. But the selective reprocessing, that's something I think somebody else tried to, tried to debunk this, what Pavel has said, but you know, I'm not an expert on this field, so I can't really give you a qualified comment. And moving fast doesn't make you faster. But you know, these were the claims. You'll be more explosive. You, you know, you're, uh, and... You know, they, they pointed to the fact that you don't get much hypertrophy from it as a, as a benefit. <laughs> as a benefit? Yeah, because well, if, you're in a, yeah. if you're in a weight, if you're a fighter, a weight class sport, you don't necessarily want to gain weight. So, you and know. I kind of figure like the people who are very efficient at this, uh, they're, you know, doing these, these competitions and stuff, they're probably at the point where the kettlebell isn't really doing anything for them. So when they're not mind, really. The better I get at this kettlebell, the more athletic I am, the better shape I'm in, but really the less challenging the kettlebells are becoming and the more useless, so it's probably not building any muscle. Here's the thing, kettlebell sport is not there to build muscle, period, period. It's a cardiovascular explosive sport. And if somebody wants to become more efficient at their sport, they don't want to look like bodybuilders. You know, they, they, there was this bullshit about like, these skills somehow transfer to other activities. That's complete nonsense. It goes every, against every principle of motor learning, and I should have known better. I agree 100% that if you improve the skill or the technique, you'll get better at, let's stick with kettlebell sport. I think that's what they're still talking about. And the skill transfer that I believe that people allude to, or that I would allude to, is the benefits of the cardiovascular endurance the explosiveness, the strength that you're building when you get into the sport. And this can really augment your life. And I'm not saying on a professional level because sometimes or most of the time, professional sports is detrimental to your health, especially if you want to reach the elite. And I wouldn't say that a... But here's the thing, here's the thing. I've talked to Andrew Charniga on my podcast and he said, if you allow full bending and explosive movements then the skill transfer from, let's say like kettlebell sport into weightlifting would be there. I would assume that I understand a jerk with a barbell much faster than somebody who's not into this. And the skill transfer from a physical standpoint, that's what people call the kettlebell or the what the hell effect because it transfers into, transfers into everyday life because it touches so many bases of human performance. So here we have it. 
Kettlebell workouts don't seem to benefit Steve Maxwell. Totally fine. Seems to have messed up his shoulder. Well, may happen, even though he doesn't have evidence for it. Because if you do other athletics in the meantime, it might be that other things messed up your shoulder. Maybe he knew what he was doing, but just something happened. Heavy weight or, you know, one false move and boom, there you go. Or he didn't know what he was doing and he was exceeding capacity. And there you go as well. But I think you can bounce back from an injury. But then taking the tool, throwing it, throwing it into the trash and telling everybody that they're not supposed to like it any, anymore because it hurt you doesn't make sense. And again, here is what I'm hearing. I'm assuming I get the impression, Steve, if you're watching this, it seems like you're jealous of Pavel, like so many other people. You know, I critique Pavel a lot on this podcast because I don't accept everything that he says. I listen to it and then I form my own opinions. But he single-handedly with John Duquesne and then on his own with Strong First popularized kettlebells in the West, period. If we like it or not, everybody knows Pavel. And I think some people have a problem with this because they think, well, he just took the tool and made money with it with his marketing tactics. And let me tell you one thing. If you have solid marketing tactics, you give people what they want and then you give people what they need and you help them, you're supposed to earn millions. This is how capitalism works and this is how building a business works. You have to understand certain marketing tactics. And if your product delivers at the end, you have to become a master at specializing in marketing because then you can reach more people and ultimately help more people. And will you earn more money? Most definitely. That's another incentive as well. And just because Pavel did it, we cannot walk around and be mad at him. We should have done the same thing. And if you didn't, it's your fault. That's what it is. It sounds like jealousy to a certain extent. But again, Steve, if you've been watching this until now, I'm extending my invite to the podcast. I want to have a fruitful discussion with you. I want to talk about kettlebells and talk about your background. I mean, you're an OG and I want to learn from OGs, listen to the OGs. And then, yeah, I want to give you my feedback as well. It would be an awesome podcast. So here's the next thing that you have to do. Clean and press that like and subscribe button. Share with a friend who's also interested in kettlebells. And if you're a man over 40 and you're looking to get in shape with kettlebells and you just want to get started and you're looking for a solid beginner's program, check the first link in the description. It's 100% free.